In this movie, we're going to be talking about some of the new selectors that we have to work with. We'll be using the file called newselectors.html. You can find that in your working files directory. Now this particular example file is a little bit contrived. Usually you would have access to the HTML and you would be able to add things like class equals links. But we're going to pretend that we don't have access to the HTML file and that whoever is in charge of the HTML file hasn't added any extra classes into the document. That means that for us as CSS coders, our options are a little bit more limited. This is the CSS that we used in a previous example, but we don't have these classes anymore to play with. So we're going to have to target the elements by their tag names, UL and LI. To get to this UL and these LIs, it's going to be a little bit tricky. And even trickier still will be targeting these elements without targeting these. You'll see what I mean in a moment. If I want to target the biggest UL, the one that contains everything, I can simply target UL. If I save this, watch what happens. It doesn't only target the UL that encompasses everything in the site, it also targets the smaller UL. So we need a way of targeting this UL without targeting this UL. You'll notice if you just target simply UL, it'll get this UL. And why wouldn't it target the smaller one? What we need to do is look at what's around these elements. So this element, you'll notice, both of the ULs have LIs inside of them. But if we go the other way, you'll notice that the parent element of this UL is the LI that has the item 5 text in it. But the parent of this UL is the body. Now again, this example file is somewhat contrived. And this is not necessarily the best CSS practice, but it is a very good way of introducing one of our new selectors. That's the direct child selector. If I target body UL, it'll target every UL that is inside of the body. That's going to be this one and this one. But if I target body UL with the direct child selector, that is going to target only ULs, which are the direct child of the body. If we imagine that this HTML is like a family tree, this UL is the child of the body. This LI here, and all of these LIs, are the grandchildren of the body. You can imagine that because they're the children of the UL, and the UL is the child of the body. This is a lot easier to see if your HTML is nice and cleanly indented. This is probably the biggest reason that you want to have your HTML indented properly. As a side note, if you're ever working on a project and the HTML is just a mess and you want to clean it up, you could go through manually and do it, or you could do a Google search for an HTML prettifier. It's spelled exactly the way you would imagine. If you paste all of your code into the prettifier, it'll make it all pretty. Now, when I say body direct child UL, I'm talking about this UL, because this UL is not a direct child of the body. It's a direct child of this item 5 LI. In fact, if you want to go all the way up the family tree, you could say this UL is a great grandchild of the body, and this UL is the direct child of the body. Now, if I save these new changes here and refresh it in the browser, you'll notice that this border is now only applying to this big element. Pretty handy. Now, same thing here. If I want to target every one of the big links, I could say body ul li. I'm doing the direct child selector because I need to target this guy, then its direct child, then its direct child. If I don't do direct children both times, it might jump from body to this ul and then these li's. Let me show that to you. If I delete the direct children and I give it something else like color of white, you'll notice that all of these are white. But if I put back those direct child selectors, it only targets these guys here. The reason that these guys are white 
is that color is inherited to the child element. I'm going to get rid of that. But you may have noticed when I added this, that margin there goes back in or comes back out for these child elements. So that's the direct child selector. Now, if I want to target anything that's the furthest nested level in, that's actually easier to do. We don't need to use the direct child selector. We can say something like UL, UL. UL, UL will get me every UL that is inside another UL somehow. In other words, it'll get me this guy because he's inside of this UL but it will not get me this guy because this guy is not inside of any UL. The only thing it's inside of is the body and the HTML tag. Now you'll notice this UL gets that special formatting. Same thing for this sublink. I could say UL, UL, LI. That'll get me all of the list items inside of here. There's actually another way you can do this. Now you may have noticed that there are often multiple ways of doing something. Very often, both ways are good ways of doing it. Really the thing that you need to keep in mind is which ways seem better in terms of flexibility and extensibility and which ways don't. And the only way you can get that information is by trying these things out in different ways. The other way you could do it is LI LI because there are only three LIs in the document that are inside of another LI and that's these guys. That works just fine. To finish this up, instead of link colon hover, I need to say body ul li. That's the same thing here for the same reasons. And same thing for this guy, colon hover. And then the sublinks is going to be the ul inside of that. Now, if I go and refresh this, you'll notice everything seems to work just fine. And if I set this guy to display not at all, to begin with, that display block makes him display. Just to reiterate, don't write your CSS this way, but it is important that you know that you have the ability to use this tool. That way you can get things that are the direct children instead of any sort of children. The last thing I want to tell you is that the direct child selector only works with Internet Explorer 7 and up. Which means, if you have to support clients using IE6, you'd best not use this. Then again, if you have a very small percentage of people using IE6, and people can still get to the content if you use that, then the IE6 users might just see a slightly different version of your site. If you're okay with that, that's great. Just make sure you test it to see what it looks like.